everybody. Welcome to the Friday edition of the LPTV Disney Morning Morning Show. The cool thing about the Friday edition is it's Friday, Friday, always a fun show. Heading into the weekend. I thought you weekend. accidentally added an ish in there, but it was appropriate because we're late today. <laughs> <laughs> when it, how did you know it was accidentally then? Because you kind of like it's not like you just stumbled over your words. You're right. It was. So we're going to have a lot of fun today because um, it's Friday and the only thing Fridays are for are for fun. And there's no reason not to have a good time today. Right, Kyle? Correct. Who are you? Um, I, I'm so confused. Who are you? I'm getting to this is the point where you introduce yourself. <laughs> Oh, I'm Doobie Mosley, co-founder of <laughs> Laughing Place, co-host of this show. Over there, who are you? I'm Kyle Burbank. I am the managing editor of LaughingPlace.com, apparently, and we're here to talk to you about all sorts of news. And we're going to start every this show the way we do every morning show, and that is with a look at the finances. So after a tumultuous day yesterday, how did Wall Street respond, Kyle? I'm going to say up, hopefully. Up. Got to have something good in my life, right? It was in the 92s yesterday. Nope, we're down. Down 2% on the day, Kyle. If you invested 100, no, that's the wrong way. If you shorted, <laughs> so not a great start uh, to the Friday stock for Disney. But um, hopefully the weather is better than the stock price. So, Ethan. <laughs> Here he is. Hello and happy Friday one and all. Unfortunately, it's my duty to inform you that, due to cost-cutting measures, LP will be removing underperforming content. So, if you want to see videos such as a drone show performance without drones, hurry up and do so before they're deleted into the abyss. And I don't mean the James Cameron movie. We would never do anything to get on his bad side. Thank you. And now for the weather. Anaheim will be clearing to sunny skies in the next few hours, reaching a high of, you guessed it, 72 degrees. How is Southern California always so perfect? If only I could afford to live there. That's right, even digital space in the Golden State is unattainable. Sigh. Walt Disney World will start partly cloudy today and make it up to 90 degrees that will feel closer to 95 before scattered thunderstorms move in this afternoon and evening. Those will stay in the forecast through around 10 p.m., so cross your fingers if you're hoping for fireworks. Speaking of thunderstorms, Castaway Key is experiencing storms now, with some being particularly heavy. Things should subside in the late afternoon, leaving temps in the 80s. Disneyland Paris is sunny now and will be in the upper fifths tonight. Tokyo will see overnight showers as well as some rain in the morning. Luckily, these should be gone by lunch, leaving mostly cloudy skies and 71-degree weather. Shanghai will be cloudy tomorrow and top out at 78. It will also be a bit breezy. I'm breezy. Lastly, Hong Kong could see isolated storms for a spell in the morning and again in the late evening. In between, they'll reach a real feel of 95. With that, we've made it through another full week of Disney weather reports. As always, be sure to tune into DTL tomorrow night. It's trivia, sometimes. And, of course, keep an eye on LaughingPlace.com because, if Disney can drop that much bad news on a Thursday, one can only imagine what they're saving for a Friday night news dump. Have a great weekend and bye for now. <laughs> ah, thank you, Ethan. That is a good point, Ethan. Um, what is your temperature? Are you in the Fifites over there in Missouri today? <laughs> we are not in the Fifites. I believe we're in the 70s. Uh, it started just started raining or it's about to start raining. 74 right now. Okay. But it's been a little humid. Our chat is a little slow, so I'm going to give a special shout out to the first person that actually says something in our chat today. I was going to say, I maybe mine's just broken because I don't see any comments. So exactly, just streaming. Right. Not even people who work here. I told you so to tune into Ethan today. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start with, just with uh, what is obviously the biggest news. Hey, good morning, Rich. Oh, so he's in the six heights. Um, we're going to start with what is obviously the biggest news in the world of Disney these days, and that is the release of a new headband, the Chocolate Churro headband, and we're, uh, this is going to be on Shop Disney. Is this right, Kyle? Uh, yes, I believe so. It might make its way to the parks as well, but you never know about that. Uh, yeah. So, might already uh, be in the parks. Who knows? <laughs> if you want to get this, we invite you to use our link right here to go purchase it, because Kyle, why? 
because we get a nice uh, commission. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but you help support Laughing Place in a nice, easy way. Be sure to use code SHIPMAGIC if you spend more than $75 to get free shipping. For whatever reason, Shop Disney does not just apply free shipping when you reach that threshold. <laughs> yeah. You have to enter a code. Disney Tech is fantastic. <laughs> okay. Um, yesterday was a big day in the world of Disney, so we wanted to start it with a little bit lighter thing with the churro headband. But let's get to the real news from yesterday. Um, let's start with the Galactic Star Cruiser. Uh, okay. Kyle. In case anyone somehow missed it yesterday, what happened with the Galactic Star Cruiser? They announced that the Galactic Star Cruiser will be ending voyages. The last one will be September 28th through the 30th, which if you're keeping count, uh, the new fiscal year begins on October 1st or thereabouts. And um, yeah, so they haven't said, you know, we asked like, oh, are you planning to do something else with the building? They have no other details. They have no other plans. All we know is that the Galactic Star Cruiser in this form is is ending and um yeah i mean the first thing that mike said and i think it's kind of true for everyone is it's like both shocking and not shocking at the same time like i don't think i know a single person who expected that this version of the attraction at this price point was going to be sustainable forever but i also know a bunch of people had a bunch of different predictions about what would have come before we got to this point one day voyages special daytime tours, special events that uh, would encourage people to come back, doing a new show to encourage people to come back. Um, and even like, you know, we saw some discounts, but they all started off very targeted and then got a little bit wider. And now, th now they're fairly wide, but those have only been recent developments. So I think the fact that it went from, you know, from being a thing to just suddenly not being a thing over the course of what feels like a couple of months since we've seen the decline is uh, that's the most, that's the shocking part, even though we all knew that this would probably be the outcome eventually. Yeah. Like you said, it's, it's clearly been struggling with the uh, cutting back on the number of days they're doing it and then the discounts, but I think pretty much all of us thought, Hey, what is Disney going to try to do to salvage this thing? Not, Hey, they're just going to cut it off. Boom. It's done. Just barely, uh, what, what was it, uh, barely a year after it started? A little uh, more than so a year? It started in March of 2022, so it's already been yeah. over a year, um, and it'll be 18 months. Right? It'll be, that's right. It's not, I feel like it's closing now, but no, it's got until September. So people who had bookings after September are given the opportunity to move their bookings up. Yeah, so th they've paused bookings um, through the 26th, so they're going to let people who already had things booked. I believe I saw somewhere that people who are having move bookings or getting a discount for doing so, yeah. uh, for moving them. And then uh, they'll reopen bookings on 26th, at which point I don't think they're gonna have any discounts. All those discounts they announced will no longer be valid. You'll have to pay <laughs> full price to go one last time. Yeah. yeah. Big deal. So we, we talked about this extensively as it broke yesterday afternoon. We have a live stream on our channel. You can watch Probably that. You can actually- time code. <laughs> to put it uh, I, I did you did cool. i did actually yeah i put in a because first we talked about another of the story we're going to get to and then about halfway through we shifted to this so there is a time code right on there and um yeah we brought our star wars guy mike celestino here on the air and actually broke the news to him live on the air which may not have been the kindest thing we've ever done so as, as tony <laughs> Benny said, he also did a great uh, podcast afterwards with the biggest <laughs> fans of the star cruiser they actually have a podcast dedicated to the star cruiser um, and that was a really great conversation that they had. Um, right. I think it was the first time that someone's cried on the air. I don't know. <laughs> um, that podcast is on the Who's the Boss podcast feed. You also can though go watch it on our live stream. I think um, it's definitely worth watching this one as well, not just listening to it. Um, and it was great. I watched a good bit of it too. And it was, it's, I mean, no I one, no one left. Until I had to go write about other breaking news. <laughs> No one loves the Star Cruiser more than the trio he had on the show with him that day. Um, and Mike obviously loves it immensely, too. And it was it was kind of a sad, but also celebratory. It almost was like a celebration of life in a way, too. So it wasn't it wasn't all sad. Please go check that out. Um, just a little bit of the social out there. Um, the, uh, seeing Rich's comment reminded me of this one, which I thought was kind of interesting. Just realized I will be part of a small group of people who will have experienced Disney Quest Chicago and Galactic Star Cruiser, which 
Rich has definitely went up from there. I have had the privilege to experience Disney Quest Chicago, Mickey's Kitchen, and Star Cruiser, plus the original e-ticket nights in the Magic Kingdom. <laughs> Do I get an award? Um, yeah, that's... Well, I rode... Uh, um, the, the, wow. Star... The limo thing. Superstar limo. Thank you. I was, my brain yes. just broke. So if anything with star in it, I'm there. <laughs> I would love that. That would be a good thing. Gets through all these esoteric, short-lived things. Did you do the NBA experience, Kyle? I went into the gift shop. Okay, that kind of counts. Um, a little bit other social here. Let's see. What was this one? I can't remember. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I like this from uh, the DVC dad. This this kind of sums up my feelings on it. You only know a decision was a mistake if you try it. Disney's gamble on Galactic Star Cruiser was a bold move in an era defined by playing it safe. Again, as long as the CMs are taken care of, kudos. And uh, yeah, much, much, even if they executed it, eh, and definitely marketed it, eh, but the fact that they wanted to try something new and completely different, I definitely applaud them for. And in all honesty, I, I doubt it's done. I mean, this kind of fully immersive experience over a period of time, we'll see it again. Um, maybe from someone other than Disney, maybe Disney even will try it again, but it's, the people who did it loved it too much, thought it was too great for them not to figure out how to make it work. The answer is find a way to cut back on the cost so that it's <laughs> affordable for people. I think that's, I don't know if they worked backwards on this one and like did everything they wanted to do and then figure out how much they have to charge for it. Um, but that's kind of what it feels like. And cause you know, it's not just the building. It's not just the, um, food it's all the cast members and how intensive right. that is and 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 maybe that maintenance of all the things so you need to keep the, everything working you don't have the option to have an out of order sign on one of the star blaster <laughs> things because you have people you have them scheduled to be and, and maybe the answer is maybe that's why it won't be disney because when disney does something it's going to cost you know 10 times more than <laughs> almost anybody else doing it but i don't know I, somehow they'll they'll figure it out because it was good I've talked to so many people who've done it and they loved it. They loved it. They went back and did it again and again at these prices, did it again and again. So I, I think we have not the, heard the last of these um, completely immersive experiences like this. And I'm still shocked that they didn't try more stuff with this one. Wow. Maybe under different conditions. Mark Daniel, who, if you saw his face, you probably recognize him from a lot of the Disney Parks live streams. Um, he had a nice tweet. The Galactic Star Cruiser is made of people, amazing people, amazing people working hard, making magic. Today's news doesn't need a punchline, a gift, or a joke. People have been affected. Thank you to everyone you've you've poured into the. Excuse me. Thank you for everything you've poured into this one of a kind experience. And I just love this picture he has of the Galactic Star Cruiser people that he is referring to. So, yeah, that was um, some sad news we got yesterday. And then we got some more sad news yesterday that even directly <laughs> affects uh, more Disney fans. And that is what's going on with Disney Plus come May 26th, which is only seven days away now, Kyle. Yeah, we knew from the earnings call, Christine McCarthy said that they were going to be removing some content and we were hoping we'd get a heads up. We got a little bit of a heads up, except not really. Um, so as I don't know if we expected, I expected it's uh, original content mostly. And it's uh, like he said, March 20 or May 26. And if I can, um, Disney plus is not providing a full list. The last I checked, I haven't checked this morning. I probably should. Um, there's no indication on the site about what's leaving. And the three main trades, Variety, THR, and uh, Deadline, all have lists with some overlap, some different things. So I had to go through all three of them and just try to compile as much as I could because, like I said, Disney wouldn't um, tell us everything. So there might be more than this, but this is uh, the growing list of things that will be removed, including you know one of my favorites, um, the Mysterious Benedict Society, some really new stuff that just came out like marvel and power just came out um some original day one content like uh, world according to jeff goldblum harmonious live is going so no no barges in real epcot no barges on film epcot uh, and i think the one that's getting the most reaction probably is howard 
a documentary by Disney legend Don Hahn about um, Howard Ashman being removed on the day that the live action Little Mermaid opens in theaters. And, you know, that kind of, this situation with Howard probably sums up um, the most for me because like, if you think about it, so Don Hahn made this documentary independently, took it to a couple of festivals. And then I'm sure at the time when the opportunity to bring it to Disney plus came up, it was a great thing. Oh, cool. People, it will live on this platform. People will be able to see it anytime and it will live on. And then now it's just going away. There's no way to be able to see it. Um, so I'd imagine that, that in some capacity, if he had held on to it and just even sold his own DVDs on Amazon, like at least the film would exist. And now it feels like it's just, you know, it's gone. <laughs> just gone. <laughs> yeah, that that's the difference with streaming, right? I mean, this isn't like a movie which you can still buy on DVD. Um, th these. I believe everything on this list, but certainly almost everything on this list only lives on Disney Plus, and if or yeah, there's no Hulu stuff here, right? There's so Hulu if, at the bottom. All the stuff we just okay. Have Disney Plus. So this stuff only lives on Disney streaming services. If they decide to remove it from there, there is no second place to go get it. You simply can't go watch Howard somewhere else, or go buy it, or anything, and that's just weird these days <laughs> that's something new to streaming streaming's this wonderful thing this subscription service where you get it all except when they decide not to give it to you and then you have no other way to get it um and people i saw people saying oh they're removing all the non-ip stuff but some of it is ip some of it like mighty ducks game changers two seasons yeah. of that and um some of this i don't know i mean will not will i'm sorry um encore which to me, I mean, I remember watching Encore just because Disney Plus launched and it was one of the launch shows. I'm like, okay, they have hardly any original shows. I'm going to watch Encore. Same for Jeff Goldblum. Uh, and it's, they're gone. They're going to be gone. That's just so weird. This is what launched Disney Plus. It's sad that, uh, so, and obviously we don't know what happens from here on out. Is this a temporary thing and they bring it back? They start bringing them back? Go. Doesn't sound like it. Um, they're are they going right off on it? So I don't think uh, legally they can, they can well, bring this I, stuff back. I, I don't know if they're taking a write off on all of it. Um, oh, I think that's the other thing. <laughs> I think that they are like, that's the whole point. I don't, why would they be removing it if there's no benefit to it? But then there's other ones where you're like, okay, how much did you possibly pay for Howard? That yeah, it's I mean, to take it off, <laughs> then it is to just leave it there. You're probably right. I'm not. I'm going to remain hopeful that perhaps there are some titles here that, for one way or another, will return in the future, um, or get a, a different sort of release. Um, you know, get a a release on DVD or Blu-rays or whatever the physical media is these days. LP, right? They still do LPs. Yeah. Um, they you know that they're selling more vinyl than CDs. That is. Past year? That is. I can't even tell you how weird that is. Now, Best in Snow. If you haven't seen Best in Snow and you're trying to figure out what to see before it leaves Disney Plus, you can skip Best in Snow. It is not good. I didn't even know what that was. There was actually so while we're saying like there's some great content here, there's some other ones where I'm like, I don't remember. I work in this and I don't remember this coming out at all. Uh, Timmy Failure. That's a show, a, a movie those. that was just, just one a little tiny, tiny film back the kind Disney used to do back when Eisner first took over the singles and doubles. But we really enjoyed to be failure. Um, <laughs> yeah, not only are they no longer making singles and doubles, they've taken taken the bases away. <laughs> you have to go straight to home or nothing. <laughs> Oh, man, I, I feel like I, I need to, I watched most of Willow, but I never finished it. So I probably should finish it now. I always figured there'd be time. Uh, game changers, Mighty Ducks. It's just weird. It's weird. There's time. There's time. <laughs> I always thought there would be time. Um, there's literally not enough time to watch all of this before it leaves. So, um, so I put the URL to this in our chat. We have uh, Kyle has been doing a great job keeping this up to date. I did just check Disney Plus over here. I'm like looking at the Howard page right now. There's nothing to indicate that you have until May 26 to see it. it. Just looks like it's there, like any other show. <sighs> people have been taking this hard have they not kyle well, it's frustrating. i mean that's just the way it was built that this was going to be a home for all the disney content they're going to have these original things that you can't see anywhere else and then you know they you like hey it's getting a second season it must be doing well that's awesome and then it's like oh it's like like willow just came out like or it feels like it right. might have been a little bit ago. But. I mean, it's a little bit ago. It's not a lot ago. It's, it's not a year ago. 
yeah like exactly. you can even watch like abc shows that had three episodes you can find them on hulu <laughs> So, um, I should oh, but yeah, my picks would be Howard and Mysterious Benedict Society, specifically the first season. The second season's fun too, but I think the first season's really solid. I'd recommend um, people check that out before it goes away. It, I, I described it as Wes Anderson, but like for a kid's movie. Um, so if that appeals to you, or a kid's show, I guess it is. But um, <laughs> yeah, that, that, those are, there's but some other good ones, but that, those are my top two. And if anyone out there, you know, the fact is it's leaving. So if there's anything you want to recommend people see before it leaves, you know, feel free to leave a comment. I think we're trying to work on an article of recommendations for people to see before it leaves the service here. My recommendations would be uh, Timmy Failure. These aren't big things, but Timmy Failure and Encore. Encore, just for nostalgia's sake, you want to, to as a reminder, what Disney Plus started as when they were trying to fill, have some original programming when they launched. It is a step above Disney Family Sunday, but um, <laughs> but it is a small show and haven't seen Disney enjoyable. Family Sunday on the list, by the way. <laughs> what it is, by the way, it's a it's a reality show. They they take a high school play from a couple of decades ago and they gather all the cast wherever they are in their life right now and bring them back to the high school and do a new production of it. And just repeating that now has given me the okay. you know the emotional feeling because it, it's really sweet to see these people go through it. I, see, I didn't say it. I said the emotional feeling. Yes, you're right. Best in Snow was a fun hate watch. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was terrible. Meanwhile, uh, everyone stay tuned for the Santa Clauses season two. Uh, <laughs> yeah, somehow that survived. Uh, it's trying to see what did I think we already no, but Rudolph. see, it's funny because like that's what everyone is saying. Like if you go to like, hey, this is coming to Disney Plus on this date. It's like, okay, for how long? <laughs> um, yeah. Do, do we have Spark Story on our list? I've just seen Spark Story that. is on our list. Yes. Yeah. Those were weird. I don't. It's just, so this not is not the Spark shorts themselves, but the Spark Story, which I think. Is oh, okay. Okay. Hey, Hope. Yeah, we're getting to Lake Nona news. I think that's going to be our next thing. Um, just making sure we fully cover this one. Um, but I think we have, I think we have, as I said, we have a link on there. We're going to try to stay on top of what's leaving. And then when the day actually comes May 26th, we'll do what we can to make sure we caught everything. And we definitely will do what we can to make sure we know the future, rather if there's any hope or uh, this may be just be phase one. Is there more stuff going to be leaving? Is this a one-time write down? And now Disney is still back to committed. I don't know. Whatever the case is, we're going to do our best to stay on top of it. Um, were they able to sell the sh these shows to the network? So this this feels different than what they talked about, like removing content so they could sell it to other networks, right? Yeah, because they said that they're taking an impairment charge, which from what I'm seeing, <laughs> I just can't, I wish you had the, the Seinfeld thing ready. It's like, they just write it off. You know, you don't even know what write off is, do you? No, but they do. And they're the ones writing it off. Um, yeah, you, you, so no, I don't quite understand, but I, from what Benji was saying, who knows way more about business than either one of us combined, um, he says, yeah, it probably they couldn't sell it to other places because they're taking the write down, which is saying, hey, we lost money on this stuff, so give us a break on taxes. So if you sell it, then you're making money, and then that's somehow bad. I don't know. <laughs> business, as, as Kramer said, write it off. All right, our next story is... Um, yeah, the Link Nona move. So this actually kicked off our, I, I, wouldn't, I don't know if I want to call this bad news, but certainly not celebratory news, which is what we like to report here on at El Laughing Place. Um, but so this kicked off our yeah, live stream. Our name. <laughs> this kicked off our special edition live stream yesterday, which is the Lake Nona news, Kyle. Yeah, so a while back, um, Disney announced that they were building a new campus in Lake Nona where they were going to move much of Imagineering and some other DPEP um, departments. And I guess they even went as far as to start making employees agree to move to Florida as an agreement of continuing their employment, which we saw the exodus. Um, some of them confirmed, some of them speculate, uh, speculate leaving uh, with speculation. <laughs> Uh, but it was because they didn't want to move to Florida. And then out of the blue, they delayed it several years. And so at that point, people kind of wondered, especially once Iger came back in, whether or not 
this was ever actually going to happen. And now we've heard that, no, it's not going to happen. Um, so again, this is another one of those shock, not shock sort of a thing. Uh, I, I think that, that I was just going to say the shock is that it took this long. And so because it took this long, I started to think, no, maybe they really are going to go through with it. So there was a, a mild shock for me. I'd say the shock for me <laughs> is that it ever got so close as to people already moving and leaving the company um because the thing still had to be built so i don't know why they were in such a rush to open it and then only to push it back several years in the first place like maybe I think it's, it was just badly handled at the beginning like maybe I it's like when you're the canceling of the project overall is, is is whatever it's the way that it was handled at the beginning to tell people that they were going to have to move and and losing good people that way well, the people that they have, right, and so they quit. And so the people that they have moved, they said they're going, that have already moved, they said they will deal with on an individual basis in terms of, you know, figuring out where to go from here. Um, people that left because they did not want to move, um, you know, Disney's already in the process of doing layoffs and such. So I don't know that there's um, much hope for them unless, you know, things change and they start hiring again. Um, so I think there were 2,000 people that were scheduled to be moved. Those moves won't be happening. Um, that's 2,000, give or take, homes that were going to be sold or rented in Florida. That won't be happening now. This obviously will have an impact on the Lake Nona area on what they were anticipating in terms of an influx of a huge new business. Um, so a lot far-reaching ramifications for the employees of Disney and for the, for the people of Central Florida. But um, ultimately, nothing's changing. They are staying where they are. And one more, I, I don't know where this actually originated, but it certainly was announced under JPEG. And even if it originated before JPEG took over as CP CEO, he would have been the head of Parks Experience and Products at the time, which is the division that was moving. It was announced in 2021, so JPEG would have been CEO at that point because he got upped in 2020, as we'll all remember forever. <laughs> right, but I'm sure <laughs> it was something, if they announced it then, they had been working on it prior, probably when yeah, it was still Parks and Yeah, I think the idea solidified, you know, <laughs> I could get into it, but we won't. No, that's fine. So, so... um yeah, Chapek is uh, being undone from the Walt Disney Company in a lot of ways um, since Bob Iger has returned. So, any any more you want to say on on that project, Kyle? Uh, nope. Disappointing okay. uh, for for the ones of people affected. As far as what it means for the everyday Disney fans, probably not a whole lot different today than it was yesterday. The ramifications happened months ago. Yeah. That's kind of my feeling on it. And that's one, I mean, I, I definitely feel for the people that moved already. I really, really feel for the people that quit because they didn't want to move. But there are also hundreds, I suspect, of cast members who did not want to move, who were to keep their job, who now don't have to. And those people are relieved. So at least there is probably a silver lining to this story. Unlike he's the for, only one heartbroken. If it was him who they're like, you're gonna get to move to Florida, he would have been like, Yeah, and they're like, No, you're not, you're staying in California. Oh. Ah, I would be crushed, I would be so crushed. Oh, you have no idea, but um, yeah, I'm sure there are, there are hundreds of cast members who are just fine with it. Unlike the other two stories we talked about here, where um, Star Cruiser, there are cast members who are so sad. I mean, they'll probably get other jobs within Walt Disney World, but still, this is this is what they do as well as um, this content being removed, not only affects Disney fans, but all the writers and actors, you talked about John Hahn, they have their heart and soul projects that now are just in the ether. <laughs> I can't even imagine how painful that must be for you know the director or the, the showrunner for Willow who worked so hard. You could see his disappointment when they didn't renew canceled. it for season two. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> the disappointment when it wasn't renewed for season two he let he he showed on Twitter. That must be exponential now that it's just going, disappearing, just gone. Wow, that wow. Going back to <laughs> the Star Cruiser for for a second, I will say I guess the silver lining would be if they're able to move some of those like performers into Galaxy's Edge and do what they should have done from the beginning. Something Mike Salastino has been saying is like there needs to be live entertainment. So if you can have a Gaia show, it'll get even more comparisons to Celestina Warbuck, but go ahead and do that <laughs> because uh, that would be fantastic. That would be a nice, yeah. um, like I said, silver lining. 
That would. The shows have been developed now, so hey, wouldn't that be great? Bring them over to, to Galaxy's Edge. Um, there was some good news yesterday on the Disneyland front, right, Kyle? Yeah. A little bit. Um, <laughs> so this is from a couple of days ago. Uh, so we've talked, to, I think, a bit about Disneyland Forward before and how they've been doing these sort of outreach, community outreach, having these meetings. Um, so Ben wrote a thing about uh, that we can put a link to because he kind of just kind of explores not necessarily what was said this time, just sort of what the whole project is. And kind of also points out that, you know, we've heard a lot about how the Disney parks do continue to expand. But now with the questions in Florida, it's really kind of on California's shoulders. Um, obviously, there's some big projects still happening in Hong Kong and Paris and some other international places. But as far as domestically, now it's looking to California to grow the parks business. And so that's kind of why um, such a push for Disneyland Forward being able to use that land as they see fit and... Um, yeah, making more of Disneyland Resort. Um, all right. I think that's it for today's bad and so-so news. Now we can go straight to some actual good news. And that is uh, pre-sales for Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny starts on March, I'm sorry, May 22nd, which is Monday. Movie comes out on June thirtieth. It had a it had its premiere at the Cannes Film Festival. Yeah, do you think uh, that there are just like uh, entertainment journalists like with their stopwatch ready? So like, as soon as that first like credit hits the screen, they're like tap, and then like the <laughs> clap still going, kind of fading out a little bit. Is it like popcorn? Like, do you have to wait for like the last like two seconds after the pop, and then you're like, okay, now it's officially over. I should cut it off. Or if, if one guy keeps clapping, does that count? I need to know the specifics of how they measure these standing ovations and why three and a half minutes is good and five minutes is lukewarm. <laughs> May I, I see what I'm wondering is do they not only measure the duration but also the intensity? So this I know they, they need a plaza meter. You need to get the decibel <laughs> reading. <laughs> so it got a five. It, it showed at Cannes Film Festival. It got a five minute standing ovation. <laughs> Which is um, apparently just not good. Not, not, not yeah, so I guess standing ovation is a pretty standard thing at Con because I've been to a lot easy. of movies. I've been to a lot of movies, and I've seen maybe one standing ovation, so I well, figure... Well, there's the crew there, <laughs> so they know that they're standing up for Harrison Ford and stuff like that. Yeah. But remember, like, standing ovations used to mean something. I don't know if I've ever been to, like, a, a performance of any sort in the past decade where we didn't have a standing ovation because we're just easy marks now. Uh, at some point, you got to go anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, fine. I'll stand here and clap with my playbill in one hand. <laughs> Hamilton got a standing ovation, deservedly so. Um, so he got the honorary Palme d'Or. Palme, is it Dior? No, I'm going to go D'Or Award, Palme which is the, the highest honor. And um, there was some emotion there from Harrison Ford. So let's, let's watch emotion. Let's see if we all get the feels right along with him here. Might wanna Hey, is that Murphy Brown? So, uh, I heard you, Kyle. I'm just choosing to ignore you. That's fine. You also ignored the, the muting thing, so I'm glad that worked out for you. What do you mean? Oh, he just doesn't have the cleanest mouth, and I didn't know what the clip was. Oh, oh, yes, it did work out. No, it was, I knew it was just going to be him, him emoting. Okay. So, uh, yay, Harrison Ford. I hope the movie was good. They all seem to be awake, which would be an improvement over Crystal Skull. So... Um, they also released a new featurette for this yesterday, and we're going to watch that. Oh, one minute and 38 seconds it's like of a it. feature, but small. But small. <laughs> uh, like a feature after uh, bariatric surgery. We love Indiana Jones because we love movies. The joy of those adventures. We love the cause and effect, the tripwire of events. All these pieces fit together to make the lightning in a bottle of an Indiana Jones film but also it just fits Harrison like a glove. Preparation was not <laughs> really necessary. 
Harrison loves this character as much as the audience loves this character. So we ask ourselves, what could be the next adventure? And in this case, it was what could be the last adventure? We come to find him in 1969. The world has changed around him. He's retiring as a professor, and he's about to stumble into an adventure. Helena! Sorry. Helena, show! It's filled with awe and excitement and danger, and they've completely captured that. I felt good. And that we had made a film that the audience deserved. I feel confident that we're going to knock their socks off. I've been looking for this all my life. Is it? Heaven, hell, Indiana Jones. I felt so proud we had made a film. It's like, oh, yeah, good job. (laughs) Seems to be all about uh, Harrison Ford and we love you and goodbye and nostalgia and all that. I don't mind that. Nostalgia is a good thing. So again, June 30th. But before that movie comes out, one week from today, the biggest movie, my prediction, the biggest movie of the summer, this movie will make more money than every other movie this summer um, because... The um, what's it called? What was the Nintendo movie called? The Mar- Super Mario Brothers movie. Yeah, that one came out before summer. So, of all the summer releases, Little Mermaid's going to be number one. That's my bold production prediction here. I'm making it right now, and it comes out one week from today. The marketing is going wild for that. So, you probably have seen tons of commercials. So, I just wanted to remind you: one week from today, get those tickets right now. Um, on next week, Kyle, probably on our. Th- Tuesday show because I'm going to be out Wednesday Thursday. I want to get your box office box office predictions for a Little Mermaid, and I will give you mine as well. Um, secret and what is Secret Invasion, Kyle? Before I show this new teaser, um, what about it? What is it? What, what is it? It's a new um, Disney Plus original series for a limited time uh, coming, and it's. Wow. Uh, <laughs> basically about nick fury if you'll remember the scrolls from that were introduced in captain marvel they can replicate the look um of anyone so apparently they've been infiltrating the the world the earth for some time and uh, it's hard to tell who's who because they look like the people so it's supposed to be like a uh spy thriller sort of in the vein of captain america and the winter soldier and um, yeah, it looks a little bit grittier and less fun um, than regular <laughs> Marvel fare, but it looks like really good. And here is a new teaser that was just tweeted out this morning, I believe. June 21st. So what was it? June 20th is Indiana Jones. And the, I'm sorry, June 30th is Indiana. So what a summer you've got ahead of you. Little Mermaid, May 26th. Secret Evasion, June 21st. Indiana Jones, June 30th. It's going to be fun. Um, one more story since I just saw we just posted this. One more story. Well, it's not really breaking because it happened yesterday, but we just posted it. So it was going to be breaking news. But Mike Mack's been drinking again. So, uh, <laughs> Raglan Road, the Irish You're pub at, <laughs> at, at Disney Springs, have celebrated World Whiskey Day yesterday, and Mike Mack was there. So, has he already called in for today? No, he's here and working. He's like, he well, is. he said he had to write up the, the story, so I don't know. That could be code. <laughs> so, you can go check out what happens at World Whiskey Day at Raglan Road, which, uh, Seems like it's probably a lot of fun. I didn't say it was breaking news. I started to say it's breaking news, but the fact that we posted an article does not make it breaking. It's the actual news that would make it breaking. So no breaking news. On I don't that. think any of those were, well, maybe one of them. They weren't all Irish whiskeys. 
Doobie, um, did you know? Do you know how to tell or how to, as a rule of thumb, not a hard, fast, definitive rule, when whiskey has a Y or has an E and when it does not? So, finish your prior thought. There was an Irish, a Canadian, an American, and a Scottish whiskey in that picture. No, I do not know how to tell. Or Scotch. Um, if the country where it comes from has an E in it, then they usually use an E, and if they don't, they don't. So Irish whiskey is just with a Y, and then um, uh, like. Canadian but Ireland had. One. Yeah, Ireland, sorry, has I an e. Ireland has an E. Scotland <laughs> does not. America does. Canada does not. That's fascinating. I, I'm now I'm going through every country. What if they don't Japan. speak English? Japan um, whiskey. Japan uses a Y, just a Y. Okay. Again, this is like different distilleries can do their own things, um, but that's just like I said, a rule of thumb. That's cool. I like how um, in his article, or maybe it's how Raglan Road put it, but they put W H I S K and then in parentheses E and then Y. Very clever. All right, it is time for a tiny bit of fun. All right, this first one comes from the aforementioned Mike Mack. He sent this to me. Thank you very much. And this is from, was it not the Tim? Yeah, not Tim Miles, who had a really funny tweet this morning about um, the impending defunct land documentary on the Star Cruiser, which I really hope comes because his documentaries are amazing. But this is a different TikTok from him. All right, today I'm going to show you guys how to take your parks trips to the next level. First off, we have the how many in your party. Now, this is going to be three sets of 10 on each side. Notice how I'm focusing on the shoulder. Vary your fingers depending on how many people you're going to have in your party. You never know. You're going to follow that up with the stroller to the ankle or the ECV. That is a variation. So you're going to drive that knee up and then you're going to want to add a twist, that look back, that disapproving glare that says watch where you're going. This is going to be another three sets of 10, by the way, each side. Next up, we have the stop starts. We're going to do 10 of these. This is when people stop in the middle of the walkway. You want to make it a superset. You can hold up your hands, switch hands, alternate. You're going to run into this all the time. Next up, we have 10. Oh, the line's moving. It's like kind of like a squat. You fall down onto the onto the railing, for example. Now for the next two, the last two, you're going to want to grab a weight that you're comfortable with. And this is, yes, I do have a discount. That's you grabbing your phone out of your pocket holding it up showing the barcode so this one's just to make sure that we really attack those shoulders and if you want to add a wrinkle to the equation you can pause in the middle for it to load and we're gonna finish off with three sets of ten on each side this is pull the yellow tag and just to be safe you're gonna to want to add the variation of push up on the lap bar and guys that's really all there is to it have fun on your next trip brilliant <laughs> just brilliant we'll leave it at that all right I have a question right. for you first. Yes. Have you ever seen like some of the really old Defunct Land videos where you're still using like the voice changer and stuff? I don't think so. Yeah, like his first ones, he uses like a, a voice deepening. Like <laughs> he's anonymous, right? We don't know who does these things. Well, he, yes, correct. That's cool. That's cool. All right. On this day, this is the portion of the show where we look at stuff that happened on this day in Disney history and see if Kyle can figure it out because Kyle is very knowledgeable about such things. Um, Don't continue. On this day in 1944, the birth of an actor, but for us, I'm not even sure if, he's, if he acts beyond his one role that we all know him for in the original Star Wars trilogy. Oh, um, so, uh, is it Alec Guinness? Guinness? No, because he, he's an actor beyond the original Star Wars trilogy. We all know Oh, that. beyond. Uh, yeah, I thought you meant for us. Um, and the cool thing is you never even see him. Oh, so the guy who played Darth? Oh, my goodness. You're sad. Peter Mayhew. Sad. Happy birthday, Peter Mayhew. Oh. The guy in the Chewbacca suit. Um, and a regular at Star Wars Weekends, the late Peter Mayhew. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm like, did he? <laughs> All right, we got a movie this time. I'm going to okay. read a synopsis for you. We are this day in 1960. Orphaned yet cheerful Blank comes to live with her dour aunt Blank Harrington, who sternly runs her small New England town, starring Haley Mills and Jane Wyman. 
Pollyanna. Pollyanna. Kyle, you deserve to play the glad game getting that one right. There you go. Good job. You are one of two. Have you ever seen Pollyanna, Kyle? No. Is it on I Disney have... Plus? Uh, you know what? That's a great question. Let's Is it that still out. on Disney Plus? <laughs> I have seen Pollyanna. Have to... I can't imagine this isn't on Disney Plus. That's This is a classic, not a second tier or third tier movie. Pollyanna is on Disney Plus, for sure. Go check it out. Right there. Oh, you can see I've even been watching it. So let me show you this, and you can see where I'm at in, my, in all my classic movies. Kyle sounded way too unsure. I know this is a Rebecca family classic. She had no. She definitely knew what Pollyanna was right away. All right, on this day in 2000, we've got another movie here. I, I can't read you the synopsis. That would be too easy. So I'm just going to say groundbreaking movie from Walt Disney Animation Studios. Dinosaur. You are so right. I am blown away by that one, Kyle. <laughs> Good job. Uh, why? Why? Why do you hate me? You know, if you see uh, any other Disney film that uses uh, CGI, you know what it has. Dinosaur DNA. <laughs> That's really funny. Did you, did you just make that up? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Set 65 million years ago during the late Crustaceous period, this film follows the adventures of an iguanodon named Aladar who is separated from his own species when a carnotaur allows an iguanodon nest to be robbed. Using live-action backgrounds with computer animation of prehistoric creatures, it is the 39th animation feature, animated feature produced by Retro the Walt Animation Studios. Yeah. <laughs> and I believe this is a favorite of Tony's, right? It's, uh, I don't know if it's like his actual favorite, but it's one probably he defends a lot. Yeah. Tony does a lot of defending of stuff. We should have had him on. Tony, eh. But we should have had you on to extol the virtues of Dinosaur as it celebrates its 23rd anniversary today. Go watch it on Disney Plus, right? Dinosaur. Yes, go watch it on Disney Plus. And don't accidentally click the good dinosaur. That is a completely different you know, movie. I was just thinking, imagine if hocus pocus debuted on disney plus and then didn't do well and they pulled it and then 20 years later they wouldn't be able to make a sequel and sell a bunch of merchandise and stuff because you know it, it's because it was on home video and everybody got to go see it at blockbuster and then it was playing on these channels and stuff that built a coat following but some of these didn't even have a chance to do that so they're also they're kind of you know cutting off their nose to spite their face but they get a write-off Oh, right off. Wow, we save money on taxes, which means you really get like a percentage of the money that you want. Let's see. Where is it at? Where is it at? Oh, hey, you got it. Hey, what happened to my stereo? It's all smashed up. That's right. Now, it looks like it was broken during shipping, and I insured it for $400. But you were supposed to get me a refund. You can't get a refund. Your warranty expired two years ago. So we're going to make the post office pay for my new stereo now? It's a write-off for them. How is it a write-off? They just write it off. <laughs> write it off what? Jerry, all these big companies, they write off everything. You don't even know what a write-off <laughs> is. Do you? No, I don't. But they do. And they're the ones writing it off. <laughs> I wish I had the last 20 seconds of my life back. <laughs> Best show ever. Best comedy ever. Um, they have, there, Wasn't it the there, caveman there, from Ellen's Energy Adventure? <laughs> the Disney connection. There really is a Seinfeld for everything. It really is. The movie, unfortunately, not a Disney movie. <laughs> I know. <laughs> You want that one removed from the surface? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, folks. Do yourselves a favor. Get yourself uh, ready Monday morning to get your Indiana Jones tickets because I think that's going to be pretty buffo. Hey, Mr. Bob Newell. And um, no other uh, day in Disney history. Just three. That's it. Just just wow. three. It's sometimes you get a plethora. Sorry, excuse me, a plethora, and then sometimes <laughs> Gamora plethora. <laughs> I suffer. I suffer with pronunciation. Wow. All right, I'm trying to catch up on some Betty stuff. He will always defend the visuals in Dinosaur, but he doesn't blame people for forgetting it. 
Unless that person is Jennifer Lee and Chris Beatty at the D23 Expo saying Animal Kingdom needs Walt Disney animation characters in Dino Land USA. Okay, yeah. Are we done? Uh, I'm taking a quick look at the tweeter and um, we'll probably. <laughs> tweeter. Uh, a reminder again, please go check out Mike Celestino's Who's the Boss, either visually on this YouTube channel or um, via the podcast, Who's the Boss, on your favorite podcast application. It is a really wonderful episode um, remembering the Galactic Star Cruiser. So. Oh, there's a Facebook update or will be a Facebook app update. Interesting. Sorry. Facebook is annoying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you I, to go post the <laughs> I posted the first story just fine. The second story made me switch over to Laughing Place so I could post the other thing. I'm like, why, why are you doing this to me? I have a funny story. Sure. Oh, well, at least I consider it funny. So this morning, I, uh, I woke up about five o'clock, make sure everything worked okay at night, overnight at, at work, um, turned on Get Up so I could hear about the Lakers losing, which made me so happy. And then fell back asleep. Yay, I fell back asleep. I don't always fall back asleep. Wake up again. Oh, it's 6.30. Get up. Get ready for the day. Um, sit down to take my blood pressure. And while I'm taking my blood pressure, I look at the echo in front of me. And it says it's 5.30, not 6.30. I'm already all ready to walk out the door. Or not by now, it's 5.50. And like, I'm already all ready to walk out the door. I think I'm going to catch the bus. And I am an hour early and had no idea. I cannot recall that ever happening in my life where I just got ready an hour early. Unless it was like daylight savings time. So I'm an idiot. What do I do? Do I sit around here for an hour and do nothing? No. So I got on the bus. Went early. Got out of bed. Trying to comb across my head. Felt like an idiot. Got off the bus a couple of stops early so I could get a morning walk in. Walked like a mile to work after that. That's clever. I like yeah. it. Yeah. That was good. You that turned a negative into a positive. I did. I got a mile and a quarter walk this morning as a result. It was freezing, by the way. I wish I had a jacket. But other than that, it was a very nice walk. Did you find anything in Twitterville other than Facebook uh, is being updated? No. I did see something about uh, potentially Instagram making a version of Twitter. So while we're in the metaverse. Oh, we have uh, a little bit of news here at long last. Yeah. Um, right. We talked about all these uh, ABC, how their entire fall schedule is going to be made up of non-scripted shows. But uh, one show that they left for the summer is The Wonder Years Season 2. I don't know why they didn't just at this point hold it for the fall, but uh, whatever. It's their, <laughs> their business. Uh, premiering June 14. So you Did you check the show out at all? I've watched most of the first season. Obviously, uh, you see Magic Head there. Um, yes, I noticed Magic Head. I have not seen it at all, but now that I see Magic Head, maybe I will. Yeah, he plays the father. It's a fun show. Sorry. There's Magic Head. Magic Head as in Dulé Hill from Psych. And Holes. And um, The West Wing. Yes. West Wing. He played the valet in West Wing. I don't know who he played in Holes. Not a valet. Is it a valet? He's the assistant to the president. I thought that was the valet. All right. Well, that I may it might technically be. I just think when I hear valet, I think he just takes the car and. No, not that kind of valet. Him. Like a personal valet. Valet has more than one He's definition. Bag man. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that probably does fit. But I'm just calling the president's assistant, who okay. dates uh, the president's daughter, who grew up to be uh, on the uh, what's it's called. It's the personal aide to President Josiah Bartlett. Okay. But uh, Elizabeth Moss was, she's on, what's the name of the show on Hulu? Handmaid's Tale. Oh, that's a big one. Is that still being production? Uh, I think, I mean, yeah, there's another season coming up. Yeah. Okay. I mean, not right oh, the second, sure. obviously. It's not a production right the second. Yeah. Okay. I think we're finally done. Thanks for joining us. Everyone have a fantastic weekend and we will see you on Monday. Don't forget. Tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. Pacific, we've got Disney Trivia Live for you. So if you like Disney Trivia, make sure you like, subscribe, ring the bell, ask for notifications, and tune in tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time for Disney Trivia Live. Ethan, I hope you have a great weekend, too. Bye, everybody. I want to know. No.